Welcome to Mr. Post Frame. Today's show is going to be about the things that we would change about our Barnuminium build. Before we jump into that, I just want to let everybody know that we do offer Barnuminium design services. Uh, we can help you locate a builder. We can help you plan out your budget, get financing, uh, look for land, whatever it is that you want uh, help with with your Barnuminium build, head to our website. You can find the link in the description. We also have a Patreon membership that is geared towards your DIY crowd, DIY self-builders, DIY contractors. You get a lot of uh, access to other people in the community that are in the same spot as you. Uh, we have monthly live video calls with you. We have uh, weekly live chats with you. Uh, it's a great place to get your really specific questions answered. Uh, check that out too in the description and let's jump into it. first thing that we would change about our bar dominion build is that we would have used half inch roof sheathing underneath our metal and there is a few reasons for that um, it has caused us no problems up to this point um, but one of the things that it would eliminate uh, the chance of is condensation um, all of our clients now we either do half inch osb roof sheathing or we use drip stop uh, another thing that it helps with is Anytime you have a pipe going through your roof, a exhaust, anything like that, you have something solid to fat, fasten your flashings to. Um, it makes putting your metal on way easier. It uh, reduces the chance of your metal getting damaged when guys are walking up there installing it. We did have that happen when our gutters got installed. Uh, the gutter guys were stepping and if you're not cognizant of where you're stepping, if you step on a rib in a certain spot, you can bend it, which then you end up having to replace it. I don't feel like our house is weak because we don't have sheathing because we get our shear strength from the metal. It just adds a lot of, it does add a lot of integrity and eliminates some possible issues. And with the prices of OSB now, it just kind of makes uh, no sense not to use it on your roof. Right. Yeah. Obviously that was one of the factors uh, over the last couple of years that people chose not to, but it's because it was such an increase in expense. Uh, but yeah, it's not worth it at this point, especially if you're DIY building, yeah. uh, your cost for the materials, it, it's not going to, it's only going to add most projects. It only adds a you know couple thousand dollars. And if you consider your options of using sheathing or putting drip stop, it's really kind of, it's almost a wash washes out. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So the second thing that we would change about our Barnuminia build is how we finished our concrete flooring. Uh, so we did use epoxy on it and let, I'll clarify first that there are some great things about the epoxy that we use. Uh, the first thing is that it makes it so that the floor is not porous at all. You could have water or, or anything sitting on the surface and it would stay there until it entirely evaporated. So that part's really great. We never have to worry about things staining. Um, and we did end up putting a, like a, a satin, uh, sealer on the top of the epoxy just to dull the shine uh, so that it's not as obvious when you're walking around in dusty, uh, dusty shoes, things like that. But the reason why we would do something different is mainly because we attempted that on our own, just the two of us. And with 2,300 square feet worth of concrete to put epoxy over, that's simply not enough people. Uh, we think that we could, we would have had a better result and maybe not had it on this list had we had at least two other people with us. Is that correct? I would say the only downside for me is it just didn't look the way I wanted it to look. Sure. Um, I would use epoxy again, but like you said, you need more people than two for this big of an area. Mm -hmm. um, because as you mix up your epoxy, it's two parts. As it goes along in the cure time, it, it will change the color of the floor. So there's a couple spots where we were just ending one batch and we were starting a new batch and there's a, just a slight coloration difference in the concrete. So you can see right there, that was the end of one batch and the start of a new batch. So that one ended up a little darker. Now I will say that I never ever noticed this anymore, but it did really bother me at first. Now as far as our four by four squares that we cut on there and filling those with grout, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. I think we just, I mean, overall it just wasn't the look 
we were we were really wanting right and i guess it's because you probably don't it's sometimes hard we what we've tried to do is introduce people to different uh options for your concrete because it does the color of your concrete is going to be affected depending on what sealer you put on for me the biggest shock was that i did i guess they didn't fully digest that the epoxy would darken it so it as would much look, as it did yes like so that it would look like wet concrete forever um so but if you're going for a darker look then this is an excellent option you just need to make sure you have a really big crew and again the advantage of knowing that the kids can't like stain it and things like yeah. that um the thing to keep in mind with concrete though is no matter what you use on it nothing is a permanent sealing solution so if you polish your floors put epoxy if you put just a surface sealer on it whatever it is that you choose to do the life on it is probably five to ten years uh in your high traffic areas and so that's just something to keep in mind that you're gonna have to redo your floors eventually or at least touch up your high traffic areas over time all right so that kind of wraps up the the main changes we would make in the house i think we're pretty happy with the layout wouldn't you say all that kind of stuff oh yeah yeah there the, anything else we'd change about our house really has to do with how our life has changed a little bit in the last four years so uh, we we designed it with an office in our bedroom and now that we have a bunch of employees that is not a great uh, setup for that but but that room itself is a amazing room in our plan we're going to turn that into a little sitting area for us um I think that right now, maybe we feel like the square footage is a little much, but we know that in a few years, our kids are gonna be a lot bigger and we're gonna be so happy that we have that space for them. So I guess the rest of the changes that we would make all come from the garage. Mm -hmm. And I'll just tell you what they are and then we'll kind of discuss why. So uh, one is we would have put a full bathroom in the garage. Two, we have a canning kitchen in there. We would have closed that off with doors, which we are planning on doing and put uh, AC in there and then the third one is uh, after we started building we decided to make a room above the garage so we have a LVL header and a few posts in the garage now the posts don't um, affect you opening your garage your car doors all the way or anything like that but we could have avoided that had we knew we wanted to do that so the first thing as far as the bathroom goes that's because we lived in our garage while we were building like we got that done first lived in there and it created a lot of, uh, I guess it was just hectic coming in and using the bathroom. We had house wrap around the bathroom um, while we lived in the garage. So yes. we definitely added that. Yeah, we were here over a winter and so we didn't have, and we were at a point in the build where we didn't have the heat on in here. And so there was just, it, it did create some struggles there. Then it started creating struggles once we had like the drywall crews coming in or when we did finish the uh, concrete floors because we had to keep pulling the toilet out um, yeah. during the day and we didn't have any other bathrooms. So, um, and I think even if we weren't planning on living in the garage, I think that that is something that we would highly recommend that you at least put a half bath in your garage sure. um, so that you're not coming in, in and out of the house all the time. Yeah, we have a, a bathroom right inside the garage door, but I'm, I'm assuming that most of you are kind of like us. If you're self, you're going to self build, you might be living in the garage. You might have a bigger shop where you backed your camper in there. And it'd be, it's really nice to have that. Just kind of focus on that space, finish it. And then you have that while you work on the house. But right. just thought we'd mention that if you guys are planning on kind of going the same road we are, as I'm assuming a lot of you are. And then the canning kitchen. Um, I'm a big outdoorsman. Uh, we have a huge garden, so we're constantly using our canning kitchen in the summer is the major issue is one having that open to the rest of our garage it keeps a, it makes it a lot more difficult keeping it clean mm -hmm. and then when you are canning obviously you create a lot of heat so it'd be nice to have that all isolated for cleanliness and to keep it cool while we're working in there yeah absolutely and since we lived in the garage we really didn't notice the problem until just in the last probably year, like yeah. last summer is when we went, oh, yeah, the light bulb we, went off. We treated, we, it as, we treated it as our house. So it's yeah. kind of like an open concept where we just, the kitchen's right. open to the rest of it. And then the last thing is our garage is 56 foot long, 40 foot wide. And while I was building it, we have 512 roof pitch. I was like, man, there's so much space up here. So I decided to um, add an LVL header all the way down the one side and then put eye joists up there so I could eventually have a 13 by 56 foot room. And we had to add those posts because we didn't have our trusses built according 
uh, to have a room up there, which um, keep that in mind. If you're thinking you might want to do that, you can have your trusses built in a way where you won't have to have posts. I mean, all these trusses are capable of free spanning, even with a room up there. But it, it does affect our doors. It would have just been one of those things where it'd be nice not to have the three posts that I put in. But that it was worth it to us because we're going to add how many square feet is that? It's, like, a, it's just over 700 square feet of additional living space. So it'll be a great, and you'll access it from the loft in our second story. And so it's a great place for the kids to have more room to play yeah. as they get bigger. Um, so yeah, but if you're questioning whether or not you'll have to have that kind of setup in your garage, uh, if you want a room above it, the answer is no. We, we, you can design it in a way that you don't have any of that. Yeah, so those are those are some things that we would have changed. I mean, for the most part, we're really happy with the way, I mean, I wouldn't say we're unhappy. Those are just some things that right. we, we've been like, dang, we would do that differently, which there's always something that you would do differently. Right, right. And on our list, you know, technically speaking, three three of the five we can remedy. We can sheet the roof if you, we want to. Uh, we, can, we're, we are remedying the canning kitchen, those two uh, elements of it. Uh, so, you know, really like there's a lot of things that we're able to, to go back and do, um, and, if we want. yeah, if you really want to. So, uh, but those are just some things we thought you might want to consider if you are uh, working on your design ideas, uh, that you're going to want to put, put those factors in, especially if you think that you're going to follow the same path that we are, uh, with our build. All right, guys. So that's the quick video for today. Hopefully it's helpful to you while you're designing your post frame home. Don't forget, we can help you with that. Um, as always, we appreciate you guys watching. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, share us with your friends, and we will catch you on the next video. Thanks, Justin. <laughs>